Hello everyone, and hopefully this is the last video in the series of setting up the blinking lights when the power goes out. Where we left off last was, uh, not in this scene, let's go to test, uh, let's see, headlights, and let's get rid of the lighting in the scene so I can see what's going on, and here we are. So what we're going to need to do, I believe, is the last bit, which is, let's go to the head itself, which I believe is containing the script, no, lights out sequence contains a script. This should become a prefab, let's drag that to the let's see lights out head folder just so we have access to that later on and within the lights out head folder we also need access to the light that's going to be at the top that we did two videos ago which was the moonlight so let's go ahead and do that so here we are in the scene let's create a light that we're just going to use uh, for testing purposes so let's go to light and point light and just stick that somewhere up maybe and over up there maybe sure why not turn the lighting back on and this is going to be that blue light so obviously the range we're going to decrease and we're going to bring that color towards the blue end and yeah maybe something like that and bring it down off the ceiling maybe so it's not influencing it so much yeah somewhere around that okay so that's our test light Let's just call this test moonlight so we have that to work with right, now we can go in our script we're going to add a public light light is probably a bad idea public light anima how about headlight Let's do a refactor. Right click and rename. And let's call this head delete light. Apply. And let's create another light. Public light moonlight. Great. And the moonlight is not really. Well, I guess actually when this script gets started, moonlight should be disabled. And when the power out sequence begins, the moonlight is actually going to turn on. So let's do that. So let's do moonlight.enabled is equal to false. And inside of here, let's enable that. So let's do moonlight.enabled is equal to true. Great. Uh, now we need to start our coroutine for the light show. This stuff happens. Everything's great. We do this randomization stuff and we wait until that value happens. And then after that happens, this gets called by the... So I'm sorry, this happens, then we call a new coroutine, and then this happens. So then a light show occurs for 15 seconds, and you know what, since we're <laughs> apparently dealing with coroutines within coroutines, why not make another coroutine and make this even more nested? Let's do I enumerator and final light blink. This is going to be where we end the game, basically. And final light blink needs to return something, I know. Let's just do what we're dealing with right now, which is the same thing as before, which is a floating point value. Set to zero at first. This is only two seconds in length, and we're going to need to continually increment that duration with plus equals time dot delta time. Or that is the time that's passed since the last time we did this thing. And of course, we need to do a yield yield return null so we get to the next frame and then within this span of time we need to do a couple things so this is the entire loop there are a lot of ways we could do this i remember it fizzling only twice so really we could do two loops why not let's let's do this why not let's do current duration is equal to zero and this is one and that is one so the idea is each one of these loops is going to do a bzz bzz. the reality is i don't think it lasts a full two seconds so maybe we should just do a zero and then a 0 0.5 it's a pretty quick on and off so let's do that we'll give half a second to each one and then after that we'll do end the game everything is dark and we're going to want to make sure our light source so that's moonlight dot intensity is equal to 0, 0.0 at this point within here we're going to want to pulse this up and down we need to know the speed at which we're pulsing so why don't we do a float since we have a, a known time interval, which is half a second, we can easily determine how much this should be dealt with. So we want to ramp up from whatever the current value is of that light. So the moon and light, I don't know what that is, but we're going to take moon intensity, moon intensity, divide that by the amount of time we have. So that is a, a value over time. So that's our speed. And that's what we're going to be working with. There we go. Oh yeah. Equals speed of blink coming back down here we're going to use that speed of blink to influence what the intensity of this should be now this isn't quite right and this is actually going to be a relatively smooth transition so the speed of blink is actually wrong here uh, I need to ramp it 
on to off and then from off to on and back down to off. If I want this to take the speed of a blink to be 0.5, that means it's a second for starting on and off, and that's a long time. So why don't we have this to 0.25? That way on to off is half a second. Okay, so for this loop, we're gonna do from on to off, which will take twice the amount of time, which is 0.5. Uh, you know, it's just gonna be easier to do this. Let's just do this. So let's go on, turn off, why not? Let's do turn off and then turn on. You could do this a lot of ways. This is how I'm doing it. Current duration is equal to zero at this point. So let's put that in here and reuse the variable over and over again. So while the current duration is less than 0 0.25, we're going to go from the intensity uh, to moonlight.intensity is going to be equal to speed of blink times uh, time dot delta time this also needs to be in this case negative so we're going to put a negative in front of that so it takes away from whatever that should be now we need to ramp back up on the turn on portion of this so let's go to here we are going to once again copy the same line because ultimately that's the same except for the negative because we're going back on time dot delta time is increased and we yield return null so that's off on just delete this because we're going to copy the same thing again, except we're going to go straight so it's on, and now it's, what does it go? Bzz. So it goes from off to on, off to on, so we need to do this a few more times. Here we go. Off, on, we need this. Off, on, and then another final off. So let's grab this off and put that right there. And when we're all done, we're going to make sure that the value is all the way down to nothingness, and the game ends. We'll have to deal with that at some point. Not right now. Final light blink needs to get called after the light show ends. So the light show ends here when that duration is finished. Let's do start, coroutine, and the name of the method, which is final light blink. Come back over here and see what happens within, let's get rid of the door so I know what's happening. There we are, let's turn the door off. So let's see what actually happens. So unassigned reference exception because the lights out sequence needs a reference to the headlight and the moonlight. So let's give it both of those. So let's go for my light right there. I should probably lock this right there. Select that light on the center of his face and move that to headlight and moonlight, which is right there. Let's move that to that and hit run. So that's that thing. The moonlight's on, but it shouldn't be on then. I need to move that to a different portion of the code because that was a problem. That should be on right at the start of everything. Also, the moonlight should not influence the head and the moonlight's off, but I didn't see it pulse. So that's a problem. Let's go back to the code. The moonlight intensity seemed like it was being turned on at the wrong point. So here we have a yield return and this is why. This should actually be here at the start of the sequence. Just make sure that works. So there's moonlight on at the very beginning and there is the light show oh okay i don't know why you got left on but you did that is interesting so let's come back to the sequence and make sure that that gets set to zero it doesn't okay so it just depends on what it happened to be left at so let's make sure that after we start that coroutine we set the headlight intensity to be zero testing again going back to the scene yes so the light goes completely out without any kind of pause. So let's figure out what's wrong with our final light blink script. All right, so let's figure out what's wrong with this script. So we start this one up here. We set our current duration to zero. We get a rate of change, which is going to be equal to the amount of time we want this to happen over the amount of intensity we expect this light to have, which is whatever intensity it's, it basically starts with. We then say, while the current duration is less than 0 0.25, continue to do the following, and that is take the negative of, oh yeah, that's why. We probably want to do a plus equals on this, right? Let's do that for all of these. And we can do plus equals for everything because we're using a negative here, which makes this statement negative. So it, and let's do plus and let's do plus there. And that might fix it. Watch, I'm wrong. That pulse was kind of weak and ultimately wasn't intense enough or fast enough, I think, to really do much in the scene. So let's change these time increments a little bit. So I'm going to want the intensity that it ramps up and ramps down to be even smaller. So let's have that value again. Now I'm going to want to turn this thing off, but I don't want it to get to a negative value. Let's do a float blink time is equal to 0.125f and use that from here on out as a variable. I want this to turn off in that amount of time. Yeah, let's 
do the same thing off again and then on again and then off again let's see what that's like stop please go back here hit save come back and hit run once again without this light the sound effect I'm not quite sure I wonder if hmm during the on phases I should actually be increasing the intensity by some factor eh, why not let's do times two on the on phases so it gets really bright before it finally goes out I think that's it right yep on 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 and let's try that again uh, you know what when you're gonna do something like this you might as well go big so let's go times four on the intensity that should really just bzz, bzz, the room and make it far more uh, notable yeah that was pretty bright but I think when it finally goes out we might want the white the, the light to be white after it turns off let's change the lights color so let's do moonlight dot color is equal to new uh, let's just do color dot white so after that it's going to pulse in a much brighter white light as opposed to this dark blue light that we have now might have been a bit much uh, if anything the duration of time when we're doing the off might want to be a little bit longer this might be easier for us to just animate the light source uh, rather than dealing with this in a script but since we've already gone this far we might as well continue with it you know what we'll deal with that in the future this video is good enough for the moment we'll want to probably double the amount of time that we're off compared to on before we finally turn off all right so i think in the next video what we're going to do is jump into the main scene integrate this into the existing lights and hook it up to death as well as no hook it up to power out and then hook it up to death after the lights completely go out and we're also going to need to turn off all the animatronic stuff as well so we'll probably be copying some code from before anyway i hope you like this video remember if you did enjoy it like or uh, consider subscribing it lets me know if you're interested in this content and i will see you next time so long, everyone, and goodbye.